In the beginning of this film, we meet a little girl named Keela, full of joy and innocence, living a perfect life with her loving mom and dad. The happiness they shared was tangible. Each adventure with her parents filled her heart with laughter and excitement. But happiness is fragile, and theirs didn't last long. Suddenly, 15 years fly by, and Keela's once blissful life is shattered. Her parents, who once filled her world with love, are now on the brink of divorce, tearing her heart apart. Keela's mother, heavy with emotions, drops off a close friend at the airport, and though Keela was with them, her own mood was far from cheerful. She was meant to head to a school dance camp, a place she despised. Her unhappiness was evident in every sigh, in every reluctant step. Dance camp felt pointless to her, a shallow distraction from the crumbling life around her. Her mother hands her over to her father, who, with his new friend, warmly welcomes Keela, trying to brighten her mood. But there's a tension in the air. As they drive toward the camp, they pick up Keela's friend, Brittany, who boards the car with a forced smile despite the fresh injury on her face. Keela, concerned, asks what happened. But Brittany brushes it off, Oh friend, it's just a minor thing. It's no big deal. A chilling wave of uncertainty fills the car. Later, Brittany asks to stop for the bathroom, and Keela's dad obliges, pulling over near a dark, eerie forest. The night grows late, and the absence of the girls starts to gnaw at Keela's father. Worried, he ventures into the forest, only to be jolted by Keela's terrified screams. He races toward the sound and finds Keela trembling, sitting alone on a bridge. Her eyes wide with fear, her voice quivering, she whispers that Brittany had fallen. They were joking, she explains, and then, just like that, she was gone. Her father's heart pounds with desperation as he dives into the river, searching frantically. But Brittany is nowhere to be found, only her purse and a shattered phone remaining, a haunting reminder of her presence. As he scrambles to call for help, Keela suddenly stops him. Her voice, shaky and burdened with guilt, admits, Dad, I lied. I pushed her. I didn't like Brittany. She was mean, so I made her fall. The weight of Keela's confession hits her father like a tidal wave, his mind racing with fear and disbelief. A truck approaches, and instinctively, he hides Keela, shielding her from the headlights. Now, it's no longer just about finding Brittany. It's about protecting his daughter, no matter the cost. They drive back to the city, avoiding the camp entirely, and he rushes to Keela's mother, barely able to form the words. But a mother's intuition is strong, and with just a few words, she knows something terrible has happened. The look of betrayal on her face is piercing. Anger erupts between them as they argue over what to do, their voices filled with panic. Keela's mother wants to search for Brittany. What if she's still alive? But her father, grappling with the cold reality, insists it's too late. The fall, the river, the night, it's too much. Their focus should be on saving Keela, not chasing ghosts. Reluctantly, Keela's mother agrees, burning the torn shirt her daughter wore that day, destroying the evidence of her guilt. The weight of their decision hangs heavy in the air. That night, Keela's mom is haunted by a terrifying nightmare of Brittany's lifeless body. She wakes up in a cold sweat, her heart racing, her mind unable to shake the horror of what might have happened. The next morning, she confides in her husband, her voice trembling with fear and confusion. Can their daughter really be capable of such a terrible act? Or was it all a tragic accident? Keela overhears them, her anger flaring uncontrollably. She bolts from the house, desperate to escape their doubt and judgment, but her father catches her just in time. I'm not lying, she screams, her voice filled with rage and defiance. I did it on purpose. Her father's heart breaks at her words, and with a heavy heart, he leaves the room, unsure of what to do next. Later that evening, the nightmare deepens when Brittany's father knocks on their door, panic in his eyes. He has heard that Brittany never made it to camp, and now he fears the worst. But Keela's mother, her voice steady but her heart in turmoil, lies, hiding the truth buried deep within. I don't know anything about her. Keela wasn't feeling well, so she didn't go to the dance camp. Brittany's dad, with a look of regret etched on his face, confesses, Yesterday, I fought with Brittany. In my anger, I told her I wouldn't take her to the dance camp. She'd have to go by bus. I'm regretting it now. Because she's missing, his voice trembles with guilt. He adds, I need to see Keela. But Keela's mother, standing firm, refuses, saying, she's at the doctor's. Frustrated, Brittany's dad leaves, but he keeps calling Keela. Her mother, trying to maintain the facade, thrusts the phone into Keela's hands and whispers sharply, lie. 
Tell him you don't know about Brittany. But Keela, pale and trembling with fear, hesitates, unable to lie, and doesn't answer the phone. The next day, Brittany's dad returns, his eyes filled with worry. Keela's mom, no longer able to keep the truth inside, finally tells Keela's dad everything. They decide, with nervous glances, that they'll stay at a hotel for a few days, teaching Keela exactly what to say and how to act. Keela, scared and uncertain, quietly packs her bags into the car. But just as she's about to leave, Brittany's dad appears again, his voice breaking as he says, I've been calling Keela, but she hasn't picked up once. His desperation is clear. But once more, Keela's mom lies, she's still at the doctor's, getting tests. Suddenly, Keela's dad joins the scene, and with both parents there, Keela steps outside. The tension snaps, Brittany's dad realizes they've been lying all along. His eyes narrow with suspicion, and he moves to confront Keela, but her father steps between them. A shove, and Keela's father stumbles, blood dripping from his nose. Brittany's dad, shocked at what he's done, backs away and leaves, but not before warning, I'm going to the police. Inside, Keela's mom carefully wipes the blood from her husband's face. Despite the chaos, there's a strange calm between them. They exchange smiles, something unspoken passing between them. Keela, watching this rare moment of tenderness between her parents, feels a small spark of joy. Her father then leans close to his wife, whispering, there was a bruise on Brittany's face. We could use that to pin the blame on her father. Keela's mom, eyes lighting up with the idea, nods, and they begin to plan their next move. Keela's mom heads to the police department, meeting her detective friend. She weaves a chilling, false story, claiming, Brittany, my son's friend, has been missing for 24 hours. Her father's been harassing us, acting strange, and there were bruises on Brittany's face. He must have done something to her. The detective listens, her face darkening with suspicion. Later, Keela, sitting alone, is found by her father, tears streaming down her face as she digs small cuts into her hands. Why are you hurting yourself, sweetheart? He asks gently, his voice filled with concern. You're so beautiful, don't do this to yourself. You have a bright future ahead of you. Keela, with eyes filled with pain, whispers, I'm not like Brittany, dad. It becomes clear, Keela had always been jealous of Brittany. That night, Keela's mother brings her detective friend home, ready to seal the story. The detective questions Keela, who, now playing along with her parents' plan, spins another lie. I saw Brittany a few days ago. There were bruises on her face, like someone had hit her. She told me her dad and she didn't get along, that he used to beat her. The detective, nodding gravely, buys into the story. As she leaves, she vows, I'll talk to Brittany's dad next. Soon, the detective, with a police officer in tow, arrives at Brittany's father's house. He's frantic, insisting, I'm looking for my daughter. I filed a missing persons report, but no one's taking me seriously because Brittany ran away once before. The officer's suspicion grows, pressing him further. You didn't take care of her, did you? You hurt her, didn't you? Brittany's dad, his voice shaking, responds firmly, that's a lie. I never laid a hand on my daughter. Meanwhile, at Keela's home, her dad stumbles upon a purse, Brittany's. Confronted by a friend, Keela's father lies, claiming it's Keela's purse, but Keela storms out, enraged. She knows her father is still hiding things, and she can't bear it. Back at the detective's office, Keela's mother is confronted once more. We've asked around about Brittany's dad, the detective says, and no one has a bad word to say about him. Even Keela's story doesn't match up. Did she ever tell you Brittany lost her phone? Keela's mom, thrown off guard, denies it. The detective continues, we traced Brittany's phone. It was last pinged in the area near your husband's house. Keela's mother freezes, fear creeping into her expression. As Keela leaves her father's house, Brittany's dad arrives again, desperate and broken. His voice shakes as he pleads with Keela, please, just tell me, where's Brittany? This time, she trembled in fear, her voice shaking as she said, I didn't do it intentionally. I never meant to hurt anyone. Hearing her words, Brittany's dad was consumed by terror, while Keela, too frightened to stay, bolted from the scene. She raced home, her heart pounding, but Brett Pay's dad followed close behind. Once home, Keela frantically slammed all the doors and windows shut, but it wasn't enough to calm her nerves. Suddenly, the doorbell rang. The sound echoed through the house, sending Keela into a spiral of panic. Struggling to breathe, she fumbled for her inhaler and took a desperate puff, trying to steady herself. Moments later, 
her parents arrived home, only for her mother to lash out at her father in a fit of rage. How could you be so careless? How could you let Brittany's phone get traced by the police? Her father tried to downplay it, his voice filled with frustration. It's not a big deal. Why are you so scared? I'm not the only one in this town. There are plenty of people who live here. Keila, already shaken, watched her parents argue and felt a wave of helplessness. Tears welled up in her eyes, and she began to sob uncontrollably. Seeing their daughter break down, her mother's anger softened, and she rushed over to comfort her, holding her close. Meanwhile, the detectives were closing in on Keila. They reached the bus stop where Brittany had last been seen and started searching for clues. One detective, methodical and sharp, began scanning the river nearby, his eyes narrowed in suspicion. The next day, they knocked on Keila's door once more. We've read some of Keila and Brittany's messages, the detective said sternly. They were arguing over a boy, and Keila even said, I'll kill Bit, that's why we suspect her even more now. So tell me, did Keila go to that bridge with Brittany? Her parents froze, fear flashing across their faces. No. They stammered. She didn't. But the detective wasn't convinced. I know you're lying. We found Keila's inhaler at that very bridge, by the river. Both parents gasped, pretending to be shocked. But inside, they were unraveling. Desperate, Keila's mother turned to the detective and pleaded, her voice trembling, Please, just leave. We need time. She was at a loss, knowing deep down that the police were closing in, and soon, they would take Keila away. The situation was spiraling out of control, and panic gnawed at them. They had to save their daughter. That night, they made a final, desperate attempt. Sneaking out to Brittany's house, Keila's dad broke in, their hearts racing. They planned to leave Brittany's phone behind to make it look like her father had hidden it there. As Keila's dad buried the phone, her mother kept a nervous lookout. But then, out of nowhere, Brittany's dad appeared. Keila's mother gasped, her whole body trembling with fear. Keila's dad rushed back, fists flying, but she stopped him just in time. No, stop. You'll kill him, she screamed. Brittany's dad glared at them, his voice seething with accusation. I know it was your daughter, Keila. You can't hide anymore. Panic surged through them, and without thinking, they bolted for their car, adrenaline pushing them forward. But just as they were escaping, Brittany's dad stepped in front of the car. Without hesitation, they sped forward, hitting him. His body crumpled to the ground. They stopped the car, hearts pounding, stepping out to see the damage. Blood pooled around him. Keila's mother wanted to help, but her husband coldly stopped her. No. If he lives, we're doomed. So they stood there, waiting, watching, as life slipped away from Brittany's dad. And with him, their chance at redemption. The next morning, Keila's mother, now racked with fear and guilt, held her husband close, both of them haunted by what they had done. They sat down to dinner with Keila, who smiled innocently, blissfully unaware of the horror her parents had committed to protect her. But then, as if in a nightmare, the door creaked open. Brittany walked in, alive and unharmed. Keila's mother, Brett, stared in disbelief, her heart dropping into her stomach. Brittany calmly explained, it was all just a game, a prank. I wanted to meet Keila, but my dad wouldn't allow it. So we staged the whole thing. The weight of her words hit Keila's parents like a ton of bricks. Everything they had done, all for nothing. They had taken an innocent life for a lie. Keila's mother, struggling to stay composed, gently told Brittany, go home, dear. As soon as she left, the weight of their actions came crashing down. Devastated, they realized they had supported their daughter in her deceit, and the cost was too great to bear. The guilt was suffocating. They had crossed a line that could never be undone. In the final confrontation, Keila confessed tearfully, I told you the truth long ago, but I kept quiet when I saw that this lie was bringing you two closer together. I know I was wrong. Please, forgive me. Let's just be a family again. Her parents, overwhelmed with emotion, hugged her tightly. Tears streamed down their faces, but there was no escape from what they had done. In the background, the police sirens wailed louder, inching closer, a reminder that justice was coming for them all. Because in the end, it always turns out to be wrong, and poor people have to pay the price for it. So avoid lying as much as possible. With this message, this story also ends here.